producer price index rose 0.2% month over month when market forecasts or market expectations were 04 Usually, a smaller PPI number indicates a potential peak of inflation. It's a small indication, but we still have to consider the good news within it. What can that do to AVCT, though? Well, let's go ahead and find out. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by. This is Arca coming at you with an AVCT raw price action uh, technicals and statistical threat of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community in Discord called RCAB. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. You guys, if I start to lose my voice, that's because I still am under the weather and I'm still not feeling too great. But we do have to move on. We do have to see what we uh, have in price action or what what's in store for us because the times that we're facing right now are very important. So please bear with me if I'm uh, if I pause or if I uh, need to catch my breath. My chest still hurts and that, all that good stuff. But thank you so much for those who have been uh, very kind to me with uh, with your wishes. I, I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for that. Uh, but yes, you guys, so the reason why I have here a bunch of little weird lines drawn is because of this. We have two potential, actually, there's three potential uh, formations within this section, and one of those formations just happens to be bearish. Now, the bearish formation will actually have to land within this rising wedge, usually rising wedges, when they present themselves after uh, a downside downside price action like as we've been seeing here usually these rising wedges present uh, a bearish price objective and now usually you know that's a, a bearish price objective from a breakout of about 70 percent or 75 percent as we approach the apex of the triangle so if we were to uh, guess from this point right over here so we'll take uh We'll take actually, let's let's just do it like this. We'll do it from right over here and imply this line to come down to this point right here. So we can see that we have it right about here. We can take the uh, a trend line from the hypotenuse of the triangle to the lower point and apply it at the 75, approximate, approximately 75% area. And you can see that it would take us right to where we started, which is this bottom candle at 73.45. Now, I am not absolutely bearish on AVCT. I'm only bearish on this because the lines are pretty good. But I am more bullish on this and uh, I can actually tell you why within this structure we if we actually remove this line and make an adjustment to this you can see that we are in an ascending triangle now this triangle uh, we do need a horizontal line on top which you can see actually if you can see this really really dim little green line that's actually the price of AVCT where uh, we closed. So you can see that we closed potentially really close to this point right here, which can create a symmetrical line. And that leads us that leads us to create this formation right here. Now, this formation does have a bullish price objective. And that bullish price objective is also taken from the top of the triangle uh, to the lowest point of the triangle, which could be actually, let's see, yeah, which could be actually based on price action, uh, just like this here. Since this is our lower, uh, this is our lowest candle within that structure. This you, it's hard to see this little candle here, but we can take that and then apply it to. And a point of breakout, which could be uh, the next four hour candle put uh, put right over here. So and now the top of the target is actually in absolute confluence with the uh, one thirty six a dollar thirty six level at the two spot two seven two Fibonacci ratio. And uh, that leads that leads us to face some resistance at all of these candles that have used this area as a form of support and resistance previously. So there is that as well. Now, the other formation that also has a bullish outcome is the cup and handle that we've been actually looking at. So now there is a price objective for this as well. We would actually have to make a quick adjustment to our cup and it would actually be like this. 
let's just align that uh, very nicely, and then we can bring our cup to the lowest point where is this this candle right over here. So this uh, this is our handle right over here. We can make a quick adjustment to that as well because this is where we're going to be putting the price objective. So we take a trend line from the top of the cup to the bottom of the cup, right? And we can then take it and apply it to the top of the handle for us to gauge a price objective. Now that price objective also clears this resistance range uh, and also we are getting very, very close to our two fib $1.28. So both of these bullish formations have similar targets. And uh, that, that's the reason why I'm, I'm landing a little bullish or, or more bullish uh, on the EVCT for the time being. Let's move on to the next chart. Actually, let's just open up some SMAs and see what we have against us. Um, okay. On our side, we actually have the SMA 10. And this is, uh, this is a very good sign since we do have support uh, uh, right under us. And actually the not 618 at 90 cents is also a valid form of support, which is likely where the SMA 10 should land in the next four hour uh, candle. Uh, now, I expect the EMA to be a little closer to us, but under us nonetheless. So yes, this is the EMA right over here. And it's sitting right at, uh, hang on just a sec. Yes, it's actually sitting right over here. So we have support from both the EMA7 and the SMA10 and also the 30-day exponential moving average. As you can see, it's right below us right here. Good, very good, very good news. Uh, the only thing bearish that I can see within this price action is, is that after an uptrend, when you see a hammer candle, uh, an inverted hammer like this pointed... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, printed at the very top of the trend, that usually presents a bearish outlook we can actually see some downside uh that's not however too likely but we can verify that with uh, some indicators let's move on to the next chart and see what we have okay so we are looking at the statistical side of the analysis new listeners this is volatility you're looking at represented by bbwp uh, it is direction neutral, so we pair it with a momentum oscillator similar to this one, stochastic momentum, so we can gauge that bias and direction. Based on a back test, what we needed was for us to start a contraction phase from critical expansive volatility, which I consider to be anything above this red line, the 90 percentile. Uh, the criteria in order to apply an upside, uh, the upside metric ba based on a back test is that we need both of the volatility uh, uh, component of the BBWP, which is this spectrum line you see, which is this one here, and the moving average both pivoted to the downside and below the critical levels that I that I just mentioned, the 90 percentile. Um, alongside the stochastic momentum, uh, the signal line and the the moving average both pivoted towards the upside. So this would give us the green light to apply the back test metric. Now the back test is actually performed by hand by me um, throughout the entire trading history of AVCT. So this is why you see uh, this is why you see all these metrics put up here is because I back test by hand. So now let's go ahead and apply that 50. Uh, three percent move to the upside. But I mean, actually, I can I, I can just explain to you what the uh, metrics brought for us. Uh, I tested, I back tested the stochastic momentum oscillator by itself too. And out of twelve iterations, ten were correctly guessed towards the upside. That gives us an eighty-three spot three three percent move to the upside. It's not perfect, but it is an eighty percent average, which is considerable. And uh, something very rare here too. So out of out of those twelve iterations. Uh, now, this back test is actually, it, it would be back test of volatility versus momentum profile, which would be these metrics right, to, uh, right up here. Out of the 12 iterations, 12 are correct. That gives us a 100% upside accuracy, which is very, very, very rare. Although we do have very little iterations to work with, but we do have to work with what we got. Um, that gives us an average upside thrust of 58 spot, 53% over the span of just over a month. So... We can actually apply that metric now, the 58 spot, 53% upside thrust, because both the volatility and momentum are meeting the criteria for us to do so. So the 58% puts us, let's see, in confluence with the not 236 at $1.58 uh, and also in a shorter term, uh, let's see, yeah, in, in a shorter term uh, Fibonacci retracement, we can actually see 
a target of just above the two fib at one one dollar and fifty five cents. <clears throat> so we we are looking we are looking pretty good for AVCT thus far. Now it is this is a two day candle print uh, as an indecision uh, Doji type candle. So we, we have to watch out with what's happening next. We are uh, we are still suggesting an upside continuation based on the, the statistical measures. Now let's look at the RSI for uh, for uh, bias and direction for the next trading session. I'm gonna leave. Excuse me, you guys. Ah oh, man, I'm gonna leave this picture up so that I don't have to actually explain what the what the RSI. Uh, zones are right so i know it's a huge picture of an rsi but this is essentially it right here here's a green line and here's the red line you can see green and red so uh, as i make the references you'll know what i'm talking about okay so the 30 minute immediate short term is suggesting with a tiny pivot a continuation on to the upside since we are in the deeper areas of the bull weakness percentile we are likely to be gravitated into bull strength which is very good uh, we can see a micro time frame. I don't usually like to see those smaller time frames because I'm not a, uh, I'm not trading uh, scalps uh, currently. We are uh, suggesting a continuation onto the downside, so we can see a potential downside move early, uh, early session, right? So let's go ahead and move on to the buy hourly. The buy hourly is also suggesting a downside continuation. However, we are trading above the moving average, and we are still in the deeper areas of bull weakness percentile, which means that we can likely use the uh, moving average as a form of support, similar to what we've been doing in these areas here, uh, before continuing on, con continuing on to the upside. Being in the deeper areas of the bull weakness percentile means that we can be gravitated into the bull strength. And inversely as well into into bear strength. Actually, in, for that matter, in any deep area or weakness area, we can be gravitated towards one another. Uh, now, the six hour RSI is suggesting a continuation onto the upside, undoubtedly. And this is also within the weakness. Uh, I'm sorry, the shallow areas of the bear weakness percentile. We are likely to go into bull weakness percentile. Uh, the daily RSI is now at the very, very shallow areas of bear strength percentile, indicating uh, an entry to bear weakness percentile. So we are looking at strength within AVCT, which is very much in accordance to how I'm feeling. I'm feeling about 75%, 70% bullish on the asset. So we are looking at a potential downside move uh Potentially early, uh, the early trading session to pre-market, followed by a recovery, uh, potentially by, I'd say, mid-session, 11 a.m., and continuing on to the upside, uh, as, as suggested by these indicators. Now, please do remember that I am not a financial advisor. I can't actually suggest for you to buy or sell any assets. Um, <clears throat> please take whatever I do show as a form of entertainment, and we'll be, we'll be okay. Uh, we do have the the positive catalysts within the economical measures, so this can actually uh, correct itself immediately and just face upside right away, since the markets may actually be bullish tomorrow for you know for the first time in uh, since the last rally we had for CPI uh, CPI release, which is which was actually a momentous rise. It was a record breaking high. So I think this is a pretty good place for me to leave off the video. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on Discord, on Twitter. I'll make sure to answer as soon as I can. I'm not feeling too well, but I'll try to get to you guys as soon as I could. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you well, and I will catch you at the bell. Manana. Adios.